Hello friends. In this episode one will try to explain why it is absurd to claim that the lion is the favorite in a fight to death against the tiger. I'm aware that some lion fans will not like this video, but, as I said to some people in the comments, I'm here to tell you what I think, not what you want to hear. I will be happy to discuss with you any of the statements I will make here, but please watch this video carefully and consult beforehand the sources I will specify in the description. I tell you with all due respect and friendship that I will answer only those with solid and rational arguments. And I will not explain to everyone in the comments what I have already explained in this video. This is a notice to those who jump to comment without watching the entire video. For today's comparison I will talk about the Southern African Lion and the Bengal Tiger. First of all, I would like to make it clear to everyone that in all zoology textbooks in the world it is clearly specified that the tiger is the largest cat. Whether we consider the largest specimens ever officially recorded, or whether we consider two medium-sized adult males of each species, the tiger will be larger than the lion. To determine approximately how much this difference will be, I have considered several sources that you find in the description of the video. Thus, I established that the average weight of an adult southern African male lion is approximately 408 pounds, and the average weight of an adult Bengal tiger is approximately 490 pounds. Therefore, the tiger weighs on average 20% more than the lion. It is a reasonable difference especially if we consider that the difference would be greater if we compared the largest wild tiger ever recorded, 857 pounds, with the largest wild lion ever recorded, 690 pounds. In that case, the difference would be 24%. Maybe it is not a difference that decisively tilts the balance in favor of the tiger, but it is still an advantage. Although these two cats are more than 98% similar to each other, someone could still say that the lion is stronger than the tiger, even if it weighs 20% less. Well, there are specialists who have studied this issue and have already answered it. Samuel Houghton makes it clear in his study, Principles of Animal Mechanics, that, a lion's strength at the hip joint is around 66% of that of a tiger while the lion's strength at the shoulder joint is around 70% of that of a tiger. Houghton also mentioned that, five men can easily hold down a lion but it requires nine men to control a tiger. Therefore, not only that the tiger is larger than the lion, but it is also much stronger, even without the advantage of a larger size. Because size and strength are not all that matters, let's compare the weapons of these two cats. The upper canine teeth of a lion are 2.36 inches long on average. Tigers possess much larger upper canine teeth than the lion's. They measure between 2.5 to 3 inches. The claws of an adult African lion can vary from 2.36 inches to 3.15 inches while the claws of adult Bengal tigers vary from 3.15 inches to 4.13 inches. The front paw size of a southern African lion generally varies from 4.52 inches to 4.92 inches. Some exceptionally large ones may be up to 5.31 inches. The Bengal's tiger front paw size generally varies from 5.90 to 6.89 mm. I saw that some of you attach great importance to the strength of the bite, so I thought I would document this aspect, maybe the lion is more lucky here. Well, bad luck, the tiger is superior from this point of view as well. The bite force quotient of the tiger is 127, while the lion has a bite force quotient of 112. Moreover, Wachenberg and Ruff has reported a canine tooth strength of tiger as being almost one and a half times that of a lion. I remind you that you find specified in the description the scientific studies that prove that I do not invent anything from what I tell you in this video. You may not agree with my reasoning, but I hope at least that you will have the common sense not to dispute the results of the studies of some researchers who have dedicated their lives to the study of these animals. You would probably expect that if the tiger has the advantage of being bigger, the lion will be more agile. Well it's not like that, the tiger is more agile than a male lion. Certainly the striped cat is a faster, stronger and more agile animal than the lion, and has a superior fighting technique. I didn't invent this, it's a quote from, The Amazing Planet, written by Roy Chapman Andrews in 1940. I would like to tell you that this video is not an ode to the tiger. I love and respect the lion to the same extent. But I have collected all this scientific data for you and I insist so much on the qualities of the tiger because many of you seem more influenced by the aura of legend created around the lion than by the scientific realities. 
All the comparisons we have made so far are based on scientific data collected by naturalists and researchers who have studied these cats for years. There are concrete, measurable data that can only be challenged by people who do not have enough knowledge. In the previous video about the lion and the tiger, some people commented trying to explain to me that a Siberian or Bengal tiger is not larger on average than a Southeast African lion. This statement has no scientific basis and I repeat that I will not respond to such comments because it makes no sense. Let's also analyze the interactions of these two cats with other animals, as we usually do in these comparisons. I've seen at least one video of a male lion successfully hunting a giant African buffalo on his own, so I won't pretend I don't know he's capable of such a thing. But we all know, I hope, that male lions hunt much less often on their own than the tiger. In addition, I dare say that a single lion could not hunt a 2,200 pounds gaur bull alone, which the Bengal tiger frequently does. Also, there are recordings of some tigers that was specialized in hunting even in the water some crocodiles of 4 meters long, or in hunting some bears of the same size with them. The tiger interacts quite often with black bears, sloth bears and even brown bears. They often fight these animals over prey, or hunt them as prey. How can you say that an animal that chooses to hunt carnivores as powerful as bears or crocodiles is a coward? And yet, there were some people who told me that the tiger is cowardly. My dear ones, I can give you dozens of links to videos in which lions run from various animals much smaller than them, even one-on-one, -on -one, honey badgers, wild dogs, hyenas, etc. But that doesn't mean the lion or tiger are cowards. These animals are, programmed, to survive, to carry their gene further. Animals never fight unnecessarily or for pleasure, as humans do. Moreover, an individualistic animal such as the tiger will avoid any unnecessary confrontation, which could make him unable to hunt, and therefore survive. It is true that the lion is more willing to engage in a fight with another equally powerful animal, because the pride would still feed him wounded, as long as he wins the fight. For the lion such a confrontation means all or nothing because for the lions the pride is everything. Even nomadic lions make alliances, lions cannot live alone because they are social animals that will always be looking for a family. The tiger does not have this motivation. But don't forget the tiger is, as I have already shown you, a much more skilled and experienced killer. The lion never faces one by one a carnivore as big as him, the tiger does it much more often. In addition, the same survival instinct that makes the tiger refuse unnecessary fights will make him fight like a demon when he has no choice but to win or die. I assure you that if a lion and a tiger meet in the wild, they are 99% likely to see each other on their way. But here we are talking about a fight to the death accepted by both animals. A fight in a cage if you will. So, don't come up with arguments like, the tiger is a coward and he will run away, here we don't take such a thing into account. Unfortunately, we did not find any study comparing the stamina of these two cats. All I know is that the lion's lungs would be a little bigger than the tiger's, so we could assume that the lion would be more resistant to exertion. But, as an athlete who has practiced contact sports for seven years, I can tell you that stamina is a trainable quality. Unlike speed which is rather innate, stamina can be trained. And because the specialists even tell us, we also know that, of all the felids, lions are the least active. So, on the one hand we have an animal that stays all day with its belly in the sun, and on the other hand an animal that patrols daily to look for its prey or to defend its territory. I also forgot to specify that the tiger is a better climber and a better swimmer than the lion. In addition, please remember that the tiger is used to facing bears, which are considered much more resistant than cats. And then, why do stubborn lion supporters keep claiming that their favorite cat has more stamina than the tiger? What do you know and I don't know about that? But please mention serious sources, do not come with the opinions of imposters like Clyde Beatty. We'll talk about this dubious character later. I've often heard the argument that most lion fans usually use to reach a compromise. Okay, I recognize that the tiger is a better hunter, but you have to admit that the lion is a better fighter. This argument makes me laugh every time. Do you know why? Because it's stupid. My dear ones, you speak as if the tiger were shooting its prey with a gun. Well, when an animal attacks a prey, isn't it still a one-on-one -on -one fight? Yes, it is true that the tiger hunts through ambushes, but all cats do the same, because they cannot follow prey over long distances. But from the moment the tiger jumps on its prey, the confrontation becomes a one-on-one -on -one fight. 
And that prey, as I told you before, can sometimes be quite a big bear. Doesn't the experience of all these confrontations seem to you a serious advantage? It seems to me. And because it was all about the experience of a lion fighter, let's see what the specialists tell us about this experience as well. Well, according to them, a dominant lion will fight a rival once every two to four years. Yes, you heard right. In addition, you should know that mature lions do not usually fight each other for the right to mate with a female. Most of the time, they will share it and mate with it one by one. Therefore, a young lion is driven by pride by the dominant lion at the age of two. Let's say that it takes about two more years until he forms an alliance with another nomad, in the meantime he has two to three fights with other lone lions, only to later face a dominant lion in the fight to take his pride. This means that a six-year-old mature lion can have a maximum of four fights with other fellows. A male tiger that lives in an area with a high density of tigers, will fight in a single year more than four fights with other tigers, either for territory or to mate with as many females as possible. At the same time, he will fight with some bears, leopards, wild dogs, maybe he will hunt some crocodiles. And he will procure all his prey alone, not being a misogynist and a lazy animal like a lion. But still, the lion was born a warrior, right? In the previous video in which I treated this subject, I received many comments in which it is explained to me that I did not take into account in my analysis a great advantage of the lion, the mane. Well, I researched this aspect as well, see the sources with numbers 21 and 22 in the description. Both clearly state that, the protective benefits of the mane are minimal. In addition, what is even more amusing is that the same people who claim that the mane is a great advantage, also claim that the lion is much more experienced in fighting, and even that he is, born to fight, and that he always fights until death. My dear ones, first of all, no animal is born to fight, but to survive. Then, if lions always fight to the death, that means one of the fighters must die. My natural question is, how does one of the lions manage to kill the other, if they are both so well protected by a mane? Okay, don't answer this question. Friends, please be serious, a shock is not an armor, especially for some canines and jaws that a lion has never faced. And now seriously, documenting myself for this episode, I found, among other things, the explanation of why the lion has longer hair, because he knew that after the fight with the tiger he would no longer be the king, but the queen. I love lions more than I love pigeons. But if I had to bet on a lion or a pigeon in a flight contest, how could I bet on a lion? On the right side are the advantages of the tiger. He is bigger, stronger, more agile, smarter, has bigger and stronger canines, has longer claws, kills bigger prey, hunts alone every time, fights much more often with much stronger animals, is much more active and better trained. These are concrete facts, measured and decided by specialists. On the left we have the advantages of the lion. He has a mane, he is, born to fight, he has a, lion's heart. How many metaphors and fantasies will we have to pass to the lion to balance this fight? So, I'm sorry, but I'm a rational man and the tiger is too much for the, king of beasts. This time he will have to be happy with the title of, queen of the tiger, if he decides to leave him alive. 